Good afternoon, students. Today I will present the second lecture of the course dedicated to the basics of the quantum dot physics in the frame of the course of photonics. And during second lecture, I will talk about electron st states in crystal. But firstly, I have a question for you. What do you think? What is an electron? A particle or a wave? It's a tricky question, indeed. So, what is your opinion? If you answer this question, that electron is both a particle and a wave, so you can skip this part of the lecture and go to the second part. But if you answered that an electron is only a particle but not a wave, oh my god, not only, not a wave really, so this part of the lecture is for you. So, in the macroscopic world, the simplest physical model is a material point particle or mass point particle. It is also a body whose dimensions can be neglected. The main features of the material point particle is that it has mass, velocity, momentum and kinetic energy that can be calculated like this. Also, in the macroscopic world, we have classical waves that are described by the wavelengths. The wavelength is a distance a wave travels in a single period of oscillations t with a speed v. Wavelength is also related with the wave vector k and wave number k. The wave vector direction coincides with the direction of the phase motion of the wave. It is also normal to the wave front propagation direction. But what about the microscopic world? In 1923, Louis de Broglie found out that electrons possess the wave-particle dualism as well as the photon. So it means that electron is both a wave and a particle. And as a wave, it can be characterized by a wavelength. That is nowadays it is called de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength can be connected with the momentum of the electron. Based on this, we also can calculate the kinetic energy of the electron that is related to the momentum and so on, it is related with the wavelength. Here you can see the dependence of the kinetic energy on the wave number and de Broglie wavelength of different particles with the different masses. Here you can see m0 is the um, mass of the electron. If we make some simple calculations and just imagine that we have electron that, which is accelerated by the potential of one world, uh, has uh, the usual rest mass of the electron, has the kinetic energy equal to one electron volt, then using these equations we can calculate that such electron has the, the de Broglie wavelength equal to 1.23 nanometers. What does it mean? The nanometer scale corresponds to the wavelength that electron possess in real solid-state electronic devices. At that voltages that are available from simple solar cells and principal galvanic elements. So, this effect can be used in engineering. Also, the behaving of the behavior of the electron, like a wave, uh, can be can be used to explain such effect as the tunneling. It is also called quantum tunneling. In the previous lecture, uh, we uh, considered several situations uh, where a particle was situated inside of the potential well with the infinite or finite height. But what if we have a particle that travels towards the potential barrier with a finite height? Now we know that a particle is also a wave, so we have uh, some kind of incident wave that is falling down on the potential barrier. 
also if we have the incident wave we also should have reflected wave and if some possibility of a particle uh, going through the barrier exists then we will have transmitted wave in some cases the uh, reflected wave and transmitted wave consider their uh, satisfies their Schrodinger equation for the incident wave. In that specific case, the interference between the incident and reflected waves happens. It means that probability density oscillates in front of the barrier. Its value increases and uh, takes outside the barrier. So, if the probability density is more than the height of the barrier, then it means that the particle moves through the barrier. Hooray! It happened! <clears throat> so, if you look here, you can see the real part of the wave function of the particle. And here you can see the square of the wave function of the particle, which represents the, probabil the probability of finding a particle inside of the potential barrier and after, of the, after the potential barrier. And you can see here that the value of the square of the wave function is very little, but it's not equal to zero. But what are the values of this probability in the real world? If we make some calculations, we will see that the probability of finding an article, a particle, after the potential barrier, or in other words, uh, to find uh, the, the calculate, uh, to calculate the transmission of the potential barrier, it is uh, going up to 10%, but no more. Uh, so, as you can see, the tunneling effect is uh, the fully quantum mechanical one. And it's really hard to believe that such a situation will happen in the classical world.